Okay. So what you see uh, is called PyCharm. Okay. And um, I will talk about what PyCharm is. But just to take you from beginning, right, what it means and what, what uh, programming language is, right? So the programming language is for communicating with computers, isn't it? Now for SQL, for example, you have data in the database. How do you get access to it, right? How do you communicate? How do you, you know, send data? How do you get back data, right? That's why you're using SQL. Similarly, the programming languages like Java, C, C++, uh, Python also does the same thing. You know, you have a computer, you want to make it work for you, right? So if you want computer to make it work for you, you need to speak computer language, right? You need to give instructions in, in language which they understand. And we talk, we, we say that Python, Java, these are a high level language because these languages are closer to English language, right? The commands that we type are very similar to uh, English language. But if you talk about the advantage of Python, okay, the biggest advantage is it's easiest of all the programming languages to learn. Okay, it is easiest of all um, because uh, the syntax is very less. Okay, um, and I'm sure if you uh, if you like, you know, uh, the general rule says that if you write something, if if a logic takes you to write uh, fifty lines of code in Java. You can actually do the same thing in 20 lines or even 10 lines in Python. So it's so simple. And people who, who've been learning Python from scratch, right, without any background, they find it even more interesting than people who have some exposure to C++, Java. Because those guys are initially, they're very confused. <laughs> How can it be so simple? How can it be like that? Okay. And... Uh, <clears throat> For those who do not have any exposure, for them it's easy. No? They do, they don't get into that kind of mode. So, you know, at least for a week or so, they are shocked. Non the programmers who come from other programming background, they are actually shocked to see, you know, how it's so you know it's so easy to or how it's possible to create such a simple language. Okay, so so that's that's why I you know I feel easier to teach to someone who do not have background than with okay. some who has background. You know, they'll have hundreds of questions. So I tell them that, okay, this is new language. Forget about your uh, old concept. Uh, but yeah, that, that's how it is. Okay, so if you compare it, okay, it is very similar to SQL than to PL SQL. I mean, just to give you some background, okay, uh, you'll it is closer to <laughs> SQL than, you know, you, maybe if you have done PL SQL and things like that, it is that easy. <clears throat> okay, um, the main website we'll be referring to I'm going to share that one second. Uh, shit, and so this is called a python.org. Okay, this is the official website of Python, right? And you can download the software from here. Um, you can download based on the version that you are using. Okay, you can download and install it. And you have, it has a good documentation. Python is very well documented. Okay, so you can actually go and get a lot of information from here. Um, so once you install, okay, so right now the current version is 3.11.1. That's the latest version. So you can download, you can install multiple versions uh, of Python. Okay, unlike other software where it creates problem with different versions, Python you can create. So it uses something called as a virtual environment. So when you install a Python, it creates its own virtual environment, which is like its own world. So you can create multiple worlds of Python in your machine. So let's say if you're working on a project, which is 3.8, right? And you know, you're working and suddenly uh, you, you're part of another project, which is just starting today, so they'll start 3.11. So now you have to have two code bases, two different code bases, you know, um, uh, which uses different versions of Python. So absolutely no problem. You can create two different folders and you can start using it. They will not have any interference with each other. So, you know, so that's why, you know, we, we can have multiple versions of Python. But Python is very simple. Uh, it's a very lightweight uh, um, uh, software. And when you download it, probably what it will be about uh, 
uh, few a couple of hundred MBs, uh, and it downloads only the minimum tool. Okay, and as you go, get into advanced programming, you know it will you know it will um, download. You can actually install libraries or packages over it. Okay, so if you want to get into let's say we'll be doing as per our curriculum, we have uh, email uh, sending email, so we have to do socket programming. So, so socket programming is not part of your main core installer that we install Python, right? So we need to go and import. So one simple click and it, it imports all those components which are required to perform that activity, right? So like connect into different databases. Uh, you need to connect to MySQL or Oracle or SQL Server. Those capabilities are not there by default. Okay? It's there, but when you install this uh, Python, it's not available right away. You need to go and install it. That takes few seconds, few seconds, and install it, and then it gets added. So that's how your Python will grow over a period of time as you keep on using more and more packages. Okay, so your 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 Python will become more and more richer. It becomes more and more heavier. But if, but you don't have to install everything. Like you don't have to install 600, 700 MBs of software in one go. And that's also the advantage of Python. Now, if you see, as, as I said, right, it's easy to learn. And second thing, as I said, it, it is used in almost every field, whether you talk about game development, you talk about uh, data analytics, website development, there's, it has its own framework, Django, Flask. These are very popular frameworks provided by Python. So you, you can do web framework as well. So it has a lot of features. So people like, you and it's open source okay there are many people who they work to the add features they develop these packages and they upload it to what is called as pypy so you see this pypi this is called python index okay uh, python package index now you know this has a lot of um, uh, packages okay a lot of packages so you know, if somebody let's say you know you develop something and you want whole world to use it you can upload it. So this is maintained by a body called as um, uh, PSF, Python Software Foundation. Uh, Python Software Foundation, they maintain, it's a, a non-profit organization. They maintain the source code and everything. They maintain this website as well. So, you know, so you have to give it to them. If they like your package, they'll add it to PyPy. So if they add it to PyPy, it is one single click and it gets downloaded on your local machine, right? Otherwise, there's a, a bigger process of downloading. But, you know, so so that's how, you know, Python is growing every day. Python is growing and getting a lot of features every day. So once you install, and I would suggest you to go and install. Have you already done? Have you already started the using uh, Python? Um, I have installed it probably like six months ago. I okay. have like 3.10.2 version. Perfect. That sounds good. Even I don't recommend uh, using latest version um, uh, because, see, Python is very um, dynamic language. Okay, they keep on adding new features, and sometimes you know the new feature may not work with your old stuff. So mm -hmm. and so that's why you know it's, see I told you that there, there are many packages, right? There are many libraries. Now, if the new version of Python comes in, those libraries also have to be tested with new version, right? And sometimes it doesn't work. So it's always better to have, be one version lower than be on the latest version. Okay. But yes, it doesn't matter for our course. We are not going to do all those uh, complex stuff. Okay, so uh, any version is fine. So yes, 3.10 is fine. As long as it is three more than 3.8, it is good enough. Th because anything less than 3.8 is considered very old. So I would not recommend. Anything more than 3.8, 3.9, 10 uh, is all fine. So of course, when you uh, install and when you go to command prompt, or uh, you're using Mac or Windows? Windows. Um, Windows, perfect then. So when you go and type, even I have, I have got a couple of versions. I have got 10 and 11. So let's say I go and click on 10, okay? So this is the default Python um, uh, prompt, okay? Triple angular bracket. Triple angular bracket, when you see, that means, you know, your Python is installed successfully and you're, you're able to use Python now. So you go and type here command. Print is a command which prints, um, uh, you know, content onto the screen and it's a inbuilt function okay so inbuilt function means it has a predefined meaning right like you have min max decode etc in your sql right 
So something similar, okay? So it's something similar. It has its own predefined meaning. And like any functions, functions are followed by bracket open and close, correct? So you put mm -hmm. bracket open and close. And whatever you want to do, you put it inside this simple bracket, okay? Um, so you can define two, two uh, we'll talk about different types of data types, but you know, you have two main types, you know, one is your text, correct? By the way, Python is case sensitive language, unlike your SQL, okay? It is case sensitive, so you have to type everything in lowercase, okay? So it, it is a uh, lowercase language. So most of the commands, I would say 99% of the commands are lowercase, okay? So uh, it is uh, like print and then uh, you can give a text here, right? Now, in Python, you know, text can be given in either double uh, quotes or single quote. Both are accepted, okay? Uh, and later you will see when triple quotes are also accepted. We'll do later. We'll see how triple quote is different than single and double. But, you know, you, for now, uh, just remember that you can use either single or double without any problem, okay? So... You can so you know I have written print bracket open and I said hello in quotation. So hello in quotation has become a text, right? Uh, and so when you hit enter here, okay, it gives you the output immediately. So in a way, this is also similar to SQL, like a, it's a, a you know it's a one you know it's like it's we call them as a scripting language, isn't it? Or interpreter based language. That means. It doesn't wait for you to enter multiple lines of code. Each line, you can execute it immediately. Okay? Uh, mm -hmm. When you write a SQL command, you hit enter, SQL command runs and pro performs, right? Irrespective of what is the next command, right? Something similar here. So uh, unlike Java and C++, they are called compiler-based language. So in com compiler-based language, you write multiple lines of code, and then you run them together. But in Python, it is interpreter-based language. That means every line gets executed. So the moment you hit enter, it gets executed. So here I said print hello. And before I could even think what to type, right? It has already given me the output. This is good when you are using <clears throat> Python, or learning Python for, for first time, you want to see how each output uh, comes out to be and things like that. So it is good. But when you start developing uh, bigger programs, you may not like it, okay? <clears throat> like for example, if I know what print means, I want to type 10 lines of code and then I want to see how those 10 lines of code are working together, right? So sometimes it can be irritating and it's also not very user-friendly. So we have IDEs, right? Just like, you know, you have, um, say, Workbench or, or you know, you have tools, right, which helps us to do the coding in SQL. So, you know, we have IDEs designed specifically for Python. The, you know, you have VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code, um, uh, PyCharm is one. So these are called editors, okay? Um, advanced editors. Then here you'll find two types of software, okay? Which which are built for Python programming. One type is called notebooks. So <clears throat> if you have, um, uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'll hear words like, um, or software uh, like uh, Jupyter Notebook, or Anaconda, or even Google Collab. Okay? So Google Google provides its own online cloud-based editor. We, you don't have to install any software, okay? So if you are using tablet or phone, you can just connect to Google Collab and can start programming. No, absolutely no need to um, uh, use your um, uh, computer. Like, you know, you don't have to install. And by default, it gets saved in your Google Drive. So you don't even have to worry about saving the program. You can always download it, right? From Google Drive, you can download it. But by default, it gets saved in the Google Drive. Okay, It executes from the Google Drive. So, you know, so it has its own advantages, right? Especially people, uh, students who do not have, let's say, access to new latest computer, okay? For them, it becomes easy to solve. And even if you have to deal with large data set, it provides, and I'll show you, we'll, we'll go and see. It provides, um, you know, um, very large, like 200 GBs of hard disk. And even RAM is also like 15, 16 GBs of uh, RAM. So it, it is a quite powerful machine. So if you have to deal with large data set and you do not have that much of capability on your machine, you can use online collab version. But for us, it's better that we install it on local machine. 
So, so saying that you need to install Python first. Okay, you need to have Python, and if you want to see if Python is working or not, you can just go to your command prompt and type Python. Okay, it should come up. You should see this triple angular bracket. So when you see triple angular bracket, it means that your Python at least is working fine. On top of, have you have you tried installing any other IDEs or something? Yeah, I have a uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, I have Data Grip. Uh, um... Okay, so I've not heard of Data Grip, but yes, Visual Studio Code. Yes, that's that's also a good uh, tool, right? So even I use it sometimes. So I think I have okay. it open right now. So this is where I was doing something here. So okay. yes, um, so yes, so yes, you can use Visual Studio or PyCharm. Okay, great. So so you have all the software setup. That's great. I'll go back to PyCharm here and uh, yes. Okay, so then so, uh, yeah. go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, which one do you recommend uh, to while learning which uh, which IDE is simpler and easier, PyCharm or Visual Studio Code? Um, I would say both are simpler, okay. And if you look at uh, the top IDs, if you type, you'll get these names. You'll get in IDs, definitely there's no I, PyCharm and Visual Code, uh, uh, they go together, right? So if you already have VS Code, I would say continue using that. Doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> and and again, uh, um, the way even VS Code works, right? <clears throat> I'm I'm sure you know in future probably VS Code is going to take take off more because of uh, you know it's again open source people are ready to write extensions right so the extensions in VS Code is similar to packages libraries in in Python so people write new library new kind of fancy <laughs> extensions and it only makes things more fancier in VS Code so so I think that probably going forward VS Code will have slight more advantage okay not talking about visual studio is different right of course vs code is different vs right. code is free uh, thing so you can keep right. on adding new and new packages or new new extensions as we call them in vs code and it becomes more and more richer so okay so yeah i would say yeah go stick to the vs code okay okay so um <clears throat> so let's let's start coding okay uh, uh, even v, uh, PyCharm also bears very similar, right? You type a code here and you can see output uh, in the bottom, right? Same similar to VS Code. So I, we have seen how to write text, right? Hello. And this is P2, so I'm going to run P2 here. You get hello here. Now, if I say print 5 plus 3, Print five plus three is not in quotation, right? So when it, when it when you don't give in quotation, <clears throat> okay, you get the value, right? And this is very similar. I'm sure you know you have seen this, right? Um, uh, when you don't give quotation, you are asking it to evaluate. You're asking computer to evaluate, right? Um, you can use combination of uh, string and values together. So if you say print five plus three. <clears throat> equal to and you can say five plus three. So this is your your fixed text, right? Text what we call. Mm -hmm. it. So this is your text, and this is a value that we are providing, right? This is without text. So when you run it, okay. So this is printed as it is, correct? Five plus three is printed as it is. Comma is used to separate the 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 parameters, right? We call them as parameters, isn't it? In a function. So, you know, you separate those parameters using comma. So here too, we are separating the parameters using comma and whatever you write before comma is, is in quotation. So the, this is printed as it is. Comma is like adding, introducing a space. So you're introducing a space in between equal to and uh, the next parameter. So this extra space you see is coming because of this comma here. And then five plus three is evaluated and you get eight here. Right? So this is how, you know, you can uh, use print for your uh, work. And print can take any number of arguments, any number of parameters. There's no restriction. You can put five, six, seven, okay, eight. So it doesn't, it doesn't complain. As long as you are clear about what you are doing, okay, it does not have any problems. Generally, 
you know, we we get confused when you have to deal with so many uh, comma and quotation, non-quotation. So there's a, another way of doing it, which we'll see in some time. But before that, I want to introduce you to the data types, right? Similar to what we have data types when you create table, right? Every column needs to be defined the type, the, the data that it, it will have, correct? So here also, when you're dealing with any variables or any data, we need to define the types, okay? And again, these are very similar to what you have uh, in uh, SQL. So uh, first thing, as we have been talking about, let's say I, I say variable one, okay? So this is a variable name. And the reason why we use variable is that, you know, you can change its value whenever you want, right? So here you have var1 and I say 53. Now, the moment I say 53, that means var1 is taking value 53. Now, again, as I said, Java CC++, you have to first declare the type first and then assign the value. Even in uh, um, uh, PL SQL code like that, you have to first declare the value, okay? Int var1 and then you say var equal to uh, 53. But here you don't have to declare the day type. The moment you assign a value, okay, it knows what type of data it has, right? So generally when you upload a data, right, based on the data that column has, it will try to change the column value, isn't it? Something similar you can say, okay? It does not, we don't have to define the uh, type beforehand, okay? The moment mm -hmm. you start adding to it, Okay, you will, um, uh, you know, it changes, it knows the type. So for example, here, when I say var1 equal to 53, and now I say print type of var1, okay? And when you run it, okay, it says class integer, right? So okay. everything in, in, uh, in Python is treated as in class, okay? The reason is, that uh, it's object-oriented programming language. Uh, okay, so object-oriented programming language is much different than procedural programming language, okay? Uh, so originally, you know, old style of programming is procedural programming where we focus on process, okay? How to get it done, right? So for example, you know, if, uh, if, if you take a bad example like training, you know, so this one hour of our time is a process, right? So this one hour, uh, you, I, and Zoom, three of us, three of us are required to be here, isn't it? And then you do something, and it's end of the process. After that, I don't know you, you don't know me, right? But uh, but you know the actual uh, the object oriented programming is that there is an individual you, there is individual me, right? And the process is just part of our life. You know, it's it's you know. It's, after process also i exist and you will exist right so so you know so the the way we think about uh, the world we are trying to mimic in the our programming language right initially we were thinking more of process i want to get this thing done right once you get it done then you don't care who did it what how it was done things like that so that's what the programming language so c if you talk about c prog uh, c was designed to be more a procedural programming language. Then they thought that no, procedure is not the way real world works. Real world works on entities. Real worlds work on people, right? And people and things. And then, you know, um, we use procedure to do certain thing and we use multiple procedure. So main is identity, uh, entity. Main is the people who are, who are involved, not the process. So they, they started creating the class. They said, okay, so if you look at real world, this is how things are uh, in class and object format. So for example, okay, we, we'll talk about class and objects later, but just uh, since we saw the world class, I just want to introduce the concept, uh, you know, slowly here. So if I say that I'm using Apple or I'm eating Apple, right? Now you will not have any question, right? Because you know you know what apple is and you know we can eat apple but if i tell you i'm playing cricket with apple that's when you're you know you will start asking questions how can you play how can you play cricket with apple right because we don't associate playing cricket 
with Apple. So playing cricket is a procedure we don't associate with Apple. So entity, right? Now, um, if I say I'm singing, I'm dancing, fine. You, you know, you would not get doubt. But if I tell you I'm flying, okay, you know, you'll assume that I'm flying in an aeroplane because I cannot fly. As a human, we cannot fly. So we don't associate flying with a uh, with human being. So so what what programming language has done is they have created a certain functions. Okay, just like we have print functions, they have created certain functions for a class. So the moment when you say integer, okay, it means there are certain functions associated with integer. That means there are few things which you can do and things you cannot do with integer, right? So class is a bigger definition. Human being is a bigger definition. There are, you know, just training, learning is just one small part of what we do. Similarly, integer, it has a lot of other things like, you know, you can add two numbers, you can multiply two numbers. So those are the functions of integer. But you cannot concatenate two integer. Concatenation is not the property of integer, isn't it? So, so that's why it is important to know which class it belongs to. So everything in Python is treated as class and objects. Okay, so it tells you integer. It doesn't say integer. It says class integer. It belongs to a class called integer. And obviously, if you want to know what class integer means, go and look at the properties of integer. That's what it's trying to tell us. Okay, we tell us that you know the value which is stored or sorry the type that is there in var1 is class integer class integer is much bigger word than just integer okay because it tells you what integer can do and what it cannot do make some sense we'll do it later okay we'll get into class and objects later so you know even if you don't understand that's okay uh, towards the end uh, we will talk about uh, uh, class and object and how to declare a class, how to use a class. So for now, just ignore the class part, just focus on integer. So it is of type integer. The data that it can store is of type integer. Any question you have so far? No. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I can copy same thing, okay, and I paste it here. Now this time I'll put a quotation around it. If I put a quotation around it, it becomes string, the text type, right? So mm -hmm. tap, uh, the text is called string here in Python. STR, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. STR for string, uh, INT for integer. Okay. Now, yeah, and then you can I can put 53.0, okay? So this is like your float, right? So when you mm -hmm. have a integer value of, with decimal, right? Value with decimal, not integer with decimal, value with decimal, it becomes float type. So 53.0 will make it float. So you have float here, okay? Uh, when I run it, you get float. Now, the next, thing is called complex. Now, if I put 53J, okay, probably this is the last time we're going to talk about it, first and last time, about uh, complex numbers. Um, this is very similar to, uh, this is equal to square root of minus 1. So, generally, we say that square root of minus is not possible, isn't it? But square root of minus is pos possible, and we write it as um, um, I in mathematics, iota we call it in mathematics, okay. Um, um, so, so this iota, okay, uh, is represented as j in Python. So when you say j, okay, it is your, <clears throat> it is your, um, uh, the square root of minus one. That's what it means, okay. So you're talking about square root of minus one. Uh, so if I do 53j into 53j, it becomes 53 square into minus 1, right? So that's it. And we are not going to use it, uh, you know, from now on. So just good to know that we have a data type called complex. And it, you can use it if you have to represent 
the square root of minus minus values. Okay, so apart from that, there's one more basic type which is called Boolean, right? So mm -hmm. Boolean can have just true and false, and this is how you write. Okay, you write F capital A L S E. Okay, we don't have date here. Date is represented as string only, at least for now. We, you know, we we'll later we'll talk about date, uh, how to convert string into date type. But as a basic data type, you have only these five. Okay, integer float complex. These are three numeric values. So this is a number. You have integer float and complex, and then you have string, which is for text, and then you have boolean to represent yes or no, true or false. And the spelling of this has to be this way: F capital rest small or T capital rest small. So this is how you define variables in Python. These are basic variables. Basic. Uh, we have five basic variables. And these are your basic variables. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So we'll talk about different functions or different properties, right? Uh, that we, that are uh, that that you know these uh, data types have. But before that, I want to focus on uh, print. Okay. More on print. Okay. What print can do. So. Um, Let's say, okay, um, uh, uh, let's say I have, I take an example here. Let's say um, count, let's say. So let's say count is, or I would say count of pens, let's say, okay, is 50. So now you see, I've defined a variable called count of pens. In Python, there are two things that you keep in mind. Okay, that variable names can only have alphabets, numbers, and underscores. Okay, no other special character is allowed. Alphabets A to Z, right? So it A to Z, your numbers 0 to 9 and underscore. These are the only characters which are allowed to uh, declare a variable, okay? So that's the first thing you have to remember. And second thing is it, okay, underscore. Variable name shouldn't, okay, begin with a number, okay? Variable name shouldn't begin. So I, I cannot say one var. I did var one, I cannot say one var. Okay, you have to use first character has to be underscore or alphabet. So underscore one var is fine, but not uh, one var. Okay, so these two things you have to remember when you are declaring a variable. Okay, you see, I am using this hash, right? Mm -hmm. So these are your comments. Mm -hmm. so this is like comments. So this is like uh, you have uh, hyphen hyphen right minus minus right, yes, isn't it? It's very similar yeah. to that. So, uh, okay. So, yes. Um, so, these are, okay, this is how you declare variable names here. So, I said count of pens equal to 50. Now, I'm going to say cost of each pen is, let's say, I say um, 21. So, you have 50 pens and cost of each pen is 20. So total cost is going to be cost of each pen into, right? Multiplication, cost of each pen. Uh, sorry, total. Uh, count of. Cost of each pen. Cost. Count of pens. Yeah, count. Right? I got confused myself. Count and cost. Okay. So total cost equal to cost of each pen into count of pens, right? Now, if I have to, disp if I have to print this, Okay, so I have to say print, okay, uh, first text, cost of each pen is, then I'll say cost of each pen. Um, so for, um, so for count of pens, 
total cost would be and I say total cost, right? Let's run and see if we get a decent meaning. The cost of each pen is 21. So for 50, okay, pens, total cost would be total cost, right? Uh -huh. So this is how you could use your text as well as variable, right? And of course, you know, if we change here, if you buy 23 pens, you get 23 into 21, 483, right? Now, as I said, right, your print can take any number of parameters, any number of arguments, okay? Quotation, variable, quotation, variable, etc., etc. any number. Now, uh, if I have to, you know, so, you know, it's it kind of gets confusing sometimes, okay? So instead, what I'll do is, okay, there's an option called as F string or format string. So we call it as F string, okay? Format string. In format string, you can combine the variables as well as text together. You can combine variables and text together. Okay, so how to combine variable and text together? I'll say print and I'll put F and quotation. Okay, I told you it doesn't matter whether you put single or double. Okay, uh -huh. I could have put single also here. Now, if I put single, I have to end with single only. Uh -huh. So, at the start, you have a choice, but not at the end. Okay, so if you start with single, you have to end with single. You have to start with double, you have to end with double. If you start with triple, you have to end with triple. Okay, so okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, you can use single or double, it's all it means same here in Python. So here I have used double again. And what I'll do is I'll copy and paste. Okay, this is what I want. So I will copy and paste here. And wherever you have these variables, right? This is where I need to replace with the, the variable name. So I'll put this bracket here. I'll put this bracket here. I'll put this bracket here. Curly bracket, okay? So we're using this curly bracket, flower bracket. And this is within the quotation, not outside the quotation, okay? With that's that's the use of format. Okay, you put within the quotation, and then you give the variable name within this bracket. So cost, this is the first variable, right? So it comes here. Okay, count first variable, it comes here. Okay, then you have total. It comes here. Okay, now you run it, you get exactly same output. Okay, it is better because, you know, you don't have to close the code. Okay, so first you write whatever you want to write. Okay, and then just go and replace those variables with the variable, you know, uh, uh, variable name along with the curly bracket. Okay. This is how it works and you can use it. Make sense? Yeah. So this is called format string. Okay. Now, let's say if there is a, uh, the cost of each pen is, let's say, 0.23 cents. Right? So, you know, and here you want to display only one, one um, decimal. So you say, cost of each pen, let it be whatever it is, but in total cost, I want to display just one format, uh, one one place in uh, float. So I put colon. So whenever you are formatting, okay, and we'll see uh, as we write more programs, we'll see, okay, there are different ways of formatting, okay, there are multiple places where you need to format, okay. So first formatting we see when you are formatting with a uh, with a float value. So here, okay, I want to display only one value after uh, uh, decimal. So I'll say point 0.1. Point means decimal value. One means one value after point and float. So if I say point 0.1f, it will round it off to one decimal value. So see, the 2.9, you get 3 here. Okay, so this is how you can format 
your uh, values here. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, you know, we, uh, we will uh, stop here for today. Okay. Tomorrow we'll meet and we'll talk more such examples of format. Okay. There's one more example I want to do. Then we get into more, more programming details. There's one more thing which I want to talk about here is Python indentation is very important. Indentation means, you know, I can give a space here. I can give a space here, doesn't matter. I can give a space here, doesn't matter. But you cannot give a space in the beginning. Okay. There's a special meaning for it. Okay. Which we'll talk when you do conditions. Okay. Um, so by for now, okay, just remember that the every line first character should be at the first place. You cannot say space print. Okay. Mm -hmm you'll throw error and when you run it so pycharm or vs code will already you know they're intelligent editors right we yes. call them so they'll already mark you with the error here so when you see it already says indentation error okay so yeah so you have to remove this space you cannot give space that's point one and point two is um uh, you know, um, in SQL also you have semicolon to end the line, correct? Mm -hmm. so if you have only one line to talk about, you don't have to give semicolon. But if you write multiple lines of code, you have to give semicolon, right? So Python also has semicolon indicating end of line. But what Python says is, if you hit enter, I know you're going to next line. So you don't have to. So this is small, you know, very small improvement. But this is also an improvement that you don't have to write semicolon it says the moment you hit enter i know you're writing a next line of code so why do you have to give semicolon unlike in other languages especially in sql you could write in multiple languages right you could hit hit enter anywhere but not in python you cannot hit enter anywhere right we can say um, select column a column b comma column c then hit enter and say from table name hit enter where Right, multiple okay. lines you can do, but not here. Here, when you hit enter, okay. So, for example, this is big line here, right? I go and hit enter, okay. So, so see what it did, okay. So, anyway, it, I hit enter here. Let's say if I go and hit enter within the quotation, so see mm -hmm. what it did. It yeah. closed the quotation here and started with another quotation here, okay. So, this, so when you are breaking into multiple lines. So this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the output will be single line only. Just for representation purpose, we're breaking into multiple lines. So you have to indicate that there is a breakage of line here. You cannot yeah. just hit anywhere. Okay. Now, I cannot say here, if I hit something like this, okay, see, it has added a slash here to indicate that this line is not complete. There is more to this line. Because if I don't give, give this, Python will assume that, okay, total cost equal to cost of each pen. So it will say, okay, total cost, you want to assign cost of each pen. So 21.23 will be assigned to total cost. And then it says star count of pens. What is star account, count of pens? I don't know what is star account of pens. It will give you error. Okay, so it's not able to think beyond the one line. Right? So that's why you have to give, you have to indicate with something that, okay, this line is not done yet, so there are more to this line than this. So semicolon is there in in Python also, but it is not mandatory. Okay, it is there, but it's not mandatory. Okay, for example, let's say uh, we have a big program uh, with uh, let's say approximately hundred lines. So. Uh, does it execute one line after other uh, okay. in a so, sequential? <clears throat> correct. So it runs sequentially. It will run one by one. Okay. And um, uh, okay. So, so again, so let's say I give, I make a mistake here. Okay. Let's say I don't give quotation here. So there's error in line number here. Now when I run it, okay, since it's a syntax error, it is caught. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
but um, but had it been any kind of other error, let's say a uh, cost of each pen one I give. Okay, so I give one. So now what it does is see it executed everything till that point, and now it mm -hmm. is saying that cost of each pen one is not defined because when it came to execute this, it figured out oh there is no such variable in my date in my memory. <laughs> okay, so it did not give. Now, if you had to do same programming in Java or C C plus plus, it would have given us error before itself, before executing, in the syntax okay. error. Okay, so you know, they they first compile and then they run. Java and right. C C plus first they compile and then they run. So they'll catch in compilation its stage itself that there is error here. But here, no, because there is nothing called compilation here. There is no compilation error here. Got it. Okay. So it yeah. is, it is, you know, executing, and here it realizes, oh, it'll go and check in the memory. Do we have this variable? No, we don't have this variable. So it'll <laughs> throw error. So see, so all these lines of code have been executed. So so Python executes line by line, as you said, sequentially it executes, and the moment it finds error, it'll show you error. It'll not proceed further. Okay, but till po that point, it executes. Okay, so yes, so this is so this is how you know um, Python works. So we'll stop here for today.